Hey, I'm Christopher J. Mue, and welcome back to my channel. Unless you've never been here, of course, then welcome. I am so glad you've stopped by. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Urban Decay X Prince Collection. I've got two eyeshadow palettes here, two Kajal liners, a liquid face and decolletage luminizer, and a brush. I think it's a double-ended brush. I'm not completely sure yet, but let's find out together. So if you'd like to see what everything in this collection looks like, if you'd like to see what the eyeshadow palettes look like, how they swatch, how they perform, and my initial first impressions, then stay exactly where you are, keep doing exactly what you're doing, and keep on watching. First, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the little multitasking brush, mainly because I really wanna see what it looks like, but also I'm gonna need it to do my eyeshadow, as long as it has an eyeshadow side. Now, everything I got from this collection, I did get from Ulta, and the brush was $28. When I saw the initial photos for this launch, I was really kind of disappointed at first, only because the pictures that I saw, it was like the makeup that was done on the eye was just a nude look. And I was like, but Prince, purple rain? Where's the purple? And I didn't realize there was a secondary palette that came with it. Then later I realized, hence why I didn't order this from Urban Decay during its initial launch. But you know, as always, better late than never. So here we have the brush. It's not even double-ended. Bummer. I thought it was like their typical brushes that they include in the palettes, the double-ended ones, but I thought it was gonna be bigger, like for the face. Well, it says it's a multitasker brush. And according to the Urban Decay website, it says this brush is a super fluffy vegan brush that can be used wet or dry anywhere on the face and body. So I guess the main purpose of this brush is probably gonna be for the liquid luminizer. I'm guessing. Kind of pricey though, for just one big brush. Speaking of the liquid luminizer, let's go ahead and open this up. Like I said, it says liquid face and decolletage illuminizer. It doesn't have a shade name or anything. It just has, I guess, the shade on top. This was $32 and on the package it says, this time all that glitters is truly gold. We're paying homage to Prince's otherworldly presence and star power with the UD Prince Liquid Highlighter. Infused with shea butter, this illuminating formula provides sheer color to illuminate skin. Looks good on all skin tones while enhancing your skin's natural glow. Shake to activate the liquid, then apply directly onto skin or use the UD Prince Multitasker Brush for easy application. So yes, they do recommend using the big fluffy brush for this. The packaging looks really cool. I like the way that looks. Does this have a little logo on it? No, but it does say UD Prince on it. So it, it still fits the theme. My mom was so big on Prince with me growing up. I feel like she's really the only reason I even know who Prince is. So thank you, mom. I truly appreciate it. And very quickly, before I jump into the next product, I do just want to swatch this on the back of my hand just to see what it looks like. Okay, so when it first comes out, it just looks kind of like my skin tone, really. Maybe a little deeper. Let's blend it out a little bit. Oh, it is really sheer. Okay, this is a very subtle highlighter. So this hand has nothing, this hand has the luminizer. You can see it's got definitely a little bit of a sheen, but it's nothing crazy. And then the next two items are the Kajal liners. They are technically called Kajal eye pencils. We've got one in black and one in white. The white one is called When Doves Cry and the black is called So Dark. And I'm just gonna go ahead and swatch these on the back of my hand as well, just so we can see the color before we jump into the eyeshadow palette swatches. We're saving the best for last. Now these pencils were $25 each. That's really not bad comparatively in my opinion when I think of the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide-On pencils. Those are $22 each. So $3 more for rights to use Prince's name, I guess. <laughs> and yet again, the packaging is just so cool. And there's the two swatches from the Kajal liners. And I gotta say, both went on really smooth and very precise. Now time for the palettes. And for those palettes, we've got two here. I know they each have a different name. And now let's check out the eyeshadow palettes. We've got two palettes here. The first one is in a black component. This one is called the You Got The Look eyeshadow palette. And then we've got the purple one. And this one is called the Let's Go Crazy eyeshadow palette. And these palettes were each $55. 
So the components between both palettes look exactly the same except the color is different. It looks like there's song titles written in that script font in the background. Then if we flip it over, we have all 10 shades listed on the back with what the shade looks like and the shade name. Then if we slide the palette out itself. What? Oh, that's the cardboard. <laughs> okay, there's the palette. Oh, wow. That is really luxe. So satisfying. It almost looks like leather. I think it's made to look like leather, but it feels like cardboard. And then it looks like it opens in the middle. Yes, it does. And there's the palette itself. Oh, how cute. It's got a little mirror on the side and a beautiful prince eye on the left. I guess that's Prince's eye, I don't know. And this is more of our quote unquote nude palette, if you will. Then on the back, it just shows some of the ingredients and marketing information. Very clean. I'm glad they kept it minimal. And then I believe my personal favorite between the two is the Let's Go Crazy eyeshadow palette. And this one is made exactly the same way as the other one, it's just purple instead. Again, I think it's cuter already. And I think the little logo, I'll have to look up what this is or what this means because I'm really not sure. But it's got kind of a lavender tint and with the other one it's more golden instead of lavendery. It's really neat. Anyway, then the shades inside the palette, more importantly than the outside, are so beautiful and purpley. Ugh. This is my kind of color story. We have teals and purples and a red. What? Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you guys in and we're gonna get started on swatches. The first shade in the You Got The Look eyeshadow palette is the shade Sexy Dancer. Crystal Ball. Endorphin Machine. <laughs> get Off. Love to the Nines. Shaka Delisha? Groovy Potential. The Artist. Bold Generation. So dark. Now I was going to try and squeeze all 20 shades from both palettes on one arm, but I thought you guys might appreciate it more if I separated it so that you could see which color story you might prefer. So I will go ahead and insert photos of the swatches for the You Got The Look eyeshadow palette. The first one with flash here. And then the second one without flash here. And here's our video close up of the You Got the Look eyeshadow palette. Then the first shade in the Let's Go Crazy eyeshadow palette is the shade Alphabet Street. Get your groove on. When doves cry. Funk roll. Computer blue. Raspberry Beret, DMSR, baby I'm a star, Delirious, and Indigo Nights, oh wow. And there is the Let's Go Crazy eyeshadow palette, and I'll go ahead and insert photos of those swatches as well, one with flash here. and one without flash here.
And here's the video close-up of Let's Go Crazy! Okay, so I went ahead and primed my eyes using my Urban Decay Primer Potion in the shade Eden. So instead of today, like I was originally going to do, I was going to do one look on each eye with each palette. But I need this look to be kind of cohesive because I'm going to need to get dressed and I'm wearing the look out to a drag show tonight. So I actually need to look kind of okay. I'm not going to be in the drag show. I'm just watching the drag show. But I still want it to look good. So I'm essentially going to use this palette. I'm just going to combine the two palettes to make myself one and just sort of mix and match. Pretty sure I'm going to go fairly monochromatic. I'm just feeling the purple fantasy right now, you know? But first, I'm going to use the Morphe M518 brush and I'm going to go into the shade Groovy Potential. I know it's got a lot of gold glitter in it, but I'm hoping that maybe that won't come through. Actually, even if it does come through, it's not going to be so bad. And I'm going to just kind of throw this all over the crease. Ooh, I can actually see the gold glitter and it is really pretty. It doesn't stand out too much though. It actually looks good upon initial application at least. That shade has a lot of fallout and a lot of kickback in the pan. I am using a natural bristle brush though, and those are definitely tougher on the shadows. They do break it up more, so not gonna hold it against the shadow too much. Just know you might wanna start with your eyes first. Next, I'm gonna use the Dalton Dimension Designer brush. It's a pointed tapered brush, and I'm gonna go into the shade Computer Blue. I was gonna stay away from this blue. I really, really was. I promise you guys, I was. But then, I didn't, you know? I just can't help it, it's blue! And of course, I'm just gonna fill this into the inner portion of the crease, giving myself, you guessed it, a two-tone crease. However, I am going to be blending the purple into the blue quite a bit, so I'm hoping to turn the blue more into just a very, very cool toned purple, just like a barely blue, you know? Oh, that's such a pretty color! Next, I want to take a little bit of the separation from my brow to the purple away. I know I'm probably going to be putting a shimmer on top of it in a few anyway, but for now I just want something down there. So I'm going to use this little Morphe X Madison Beer pointed flat-ish brush, and I'm going to go into the shade Sexy Dancer and put that on my brow bone. It's kind of a peachy white. So I figure it will be almost like a skin tone, sort of. And that's really all I care about up there right now. That way if I choose to put a white shimmer up there, it will look okay. If I choose to put a blue shimmer up there, it will look okay. Pretty much so I can put anything up there. See, already, it just sets the base and gets it ready for something to top it. And then, just for the sake of blending, I'm just gonna pull the big fluffy brush that I used in the purple shade up a little bit higher and just barely blend that purple up into the peachy tone. Oh yeah, there we go. Now before I add in the black, which is gonna be the deepest color I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the Kajal liner in the shade So Dark first. And I'm going to essentially draw myself a little bit of a guide. And this is just gonna be for the actual wing shape. So I'm gonna take the super sharp point of this pencil and just start kind of where I would make a wing and really just make a wing. <laughs> Then I'm gonna pull this in to finish the wing. Oh yes, that's so cute! Love that! <laughs> that looks really weird. Actually, kinda neat, in a weird way. Now tis time to deepen things. I'm gonna use this Morphe M456 brush. It's a flat, wide blending brush. And I'm gonna go into the shade So Dark. Wait, is that the same shade as the... Oh, it is. It's the same shade as the pencil. Well, I'm gonna use the eyeshadow version of the pencil this time. And with this one, I'm just gonna start packing it on top of this Kajal liner first, and then start blending it and pulling it into the inner portion of the crease and all the way in to the inner corner of the crease. I'm also going to pair that up with this little bitty Morphium 326 brush. It's just a tiny little smudger brush, but I'm going to use the smudging side to break up the intensity of this line a little bit, just to kind of smudge it out. And I'm pulling a lot of that pigment from the Kajal liner right up my lash line, just so I can build up the intensity and kind of elongate the look, while also making my lashes appear more full. Again, what's not to love? 
Okay, gotta admit that black liner and that black shadow work perfectly together to blend each other out. I mean, that looks like I used one product from outside to inside. So I need to take just a little bit more of the groovy potential shade on the big fluffy brush and just add back a little bit of the intensity with the purple that I lost, which isn't very much, but I just kind of want to put it over the black just a tad to bring it back out. Now it's shimmer time! I love shimmer time, it's my favorite time. So now I'm gonna use the Morphe X Nakita N2 brush. Literally my favorite brush for all over the lid shimmer. It's just perfect. And I'm gonna go into the shade DMSR. This shade is gorgeous. It's got just enough blue speckly glitter in it to pull the inner portion of the crease into the rest of the look so it's not so disconnected, if you will. Now I want to darken up the outer corner. So I'm going to use the Morphe X Nikita in one brush. This is another flat brush, but it's got just a little bit of an arc at the top. So I like to use it for this outer corner for shimmers. And I'm going to take the shade Bold Generation and start packing that right on the outer corner of the lid. Oh, that's perfect! Yes! It's tying in with that black from the liner perfectly, and it's got this beautiful silvery purple reflect in it. It's just the perfect shade for the outer corner. And I'm pretty much going to apply that everywhere that I put the liner. So I'm gonna start in the outer V, and then slowly pull it down and in to about right here. I don't really want to go all the way into the inner corner, but I just want to deepen that up a little bit. Oh, it's so gorgeous. Now for the inner corner, just of the lid though, not like the dot of inner corner, just the lid part. I'm going to use the Morphe M210. No, that's a big brush. Scratch that. I'm actually going to use the Lunar Beauty LBE7. It's not nearly as large. And I'm going to go into the shade When Doves Cry. And I'm going to put those crying doves right on the inner corner of the lid. If it'll stick. Yeah, kinda. Okay, well, yet again, I feel like we're into topper territory. It's just not very opaque by itself going on top of other powders. But, I'm not really surprised. Because at this point, I've probably built up, what, five shadows there? So without cutting, I should have cut the crease, is essentially what I'm saying. But instead, I just packed the brush again, and I'm gonna spray some more all-nighter setting spray. And now just slide that on the inner corner instead. Hello world of difference. And you know what? I'm also gonna use that shade as my brow bone highlight. Didn't know if I was gonna, was very indecisive if I was gonna, now I know I am. Ah! Oh, it's so pretty. Wow. Oh, it's so much better up there on the brow bone too because I only have one shadow there. So it's still just the tiniest bit tacky enough to really make it stand out. Oh, that's so perfect. And it's got just a little bit of a blue reflect to it, so it even works better at tying the inner corner crease with the brow bone. Ah! I love it! Okay, now I'm gonna use the Morphe M456 again. This one had black on it, and I'm just gonna take that and clean up the lid area. Really, I'm just bringing the darkness back to my crease, getting rid of the excess shimmer that went too high. Yes, ma'am. Ooh! That is so sexy. Essentially, the top of the look is complete. I really just have to finish off the lower lash line. So I'm gonna go ahead and go off camera, clean up all of this mess that isn't straight and all the fallout that's under my eyes because there's a lot of fallout. Then we're gonna use the liquid highlighter all over the face. So give me just a second and I'll be right back. Now time for liquid highlighter. I did go ahead and prime my skin using the Urban Decay All Nighter Ultra Glow Face Primer first. If I'm gonna be highlighting pores, first I need to fill them. And this brush has a little, like, hole in the middle of it so that product can fit into it. So I suppose I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit of product right into the center of the brush. And I guess I'm just gonna put this everywhere on my face, I mean. Ooh, very glowy. And the tone is really nice. It is a very, very soft glow. It's subtle, very subtle. And that one pump disappeared really quick. It went about as far as both cheeks. You know, four pumps later, that's actually really beautiful. At first it was way too sheer for me though, but now that's a really gorgeous kind of color correcting, at least for my skin tone, 
sort of glowy base. Kind of makes me look like I'm plastic, like a mannequin. Like I've just got perfect skin that's glowy and reflective. I need to go ahead and go off camera and do all of my face makeup so that we can come back and finish off the lower lash line. Now something that was in this collection that I don't think I mentioned yet was the Urban Decay All Nighter, duh Urban Decay, the All Nighter Waterproof Setting Powder, but it had this little logo thing on the front of it. I had just gotten a replacement of my All Nighter Waterproof Setting Powder, so I really didn't need another one right now. So I did hold off on that, but just know that was part of this collection. So like I said, gonna go off camera, get this face beats and I'll be back so we can finish off the look so I'll see you guys in just a second face makeup is now done I'm a little overexposed now because I have so much brightness reflecting off of my face. Now I'm gonna go in with the When Doves Cry Kajal liner. This one's gonna go just on the waterline at first right before I finish off the lower lash line eyeshadow Oh, that goes on so nicely. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in with the, what was it called? So Dark Kajal Liner. And with this, I am just going to tight line right along the lower lashes. And with this pencil, I'm gonna pull it up into the crease area. That way it connects to the rest of the look and I don't get that weird disconnected kind of look. Ooh, that looks so good. With the white in the waterline and the black immediately underneath it, it really makes the eye look lifted and more open. That's cute. Next, using the Morphe X Jeffree Star JS 13 Bullet Blender Brush, I'm gonna go in with the shade Funk Roll. And I'm just gonna blend out that black liner with Funk Roll. Oh, Funkin' Roll. Like rock and roll, now I get it. And I'm literally putting this purple right on top of the black so that as I'm blending it out, it'll also blend in together and turn into essentially a faded from black to purple kind of blend. Give a little bit of that smoky look, if you know what I mean. And again, pulling it up and around into the rest of the look. And for the very last step of the lower lash line, I'm gonna take this Morphe M456 brush, another one, and now I'm gonna use the shade Love to the Nines. It's kinda hard to read some of these shade names on the golden packaging. And with the Love to the Nines shade, I'm just gonna really lightly and gently with not a whole lot of pigment, blend out the purple and black with a brown so that it really blends into the rest of my skin tone and kinda warms up just a little bit. It just kind of helps me achieve a little bit more of that naturalish kind of blend. Subtle, yet effective. Then last, but certainly not least, I'm gonna use this Dew Color, I think. Yes, Dew Color bullet crease brush, probably. No, 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 no. Change of plans. And now last, but certainly not least, I'm gonna use my little Beaky Blender, really tiny flat brush. And now I'm gonna go into the shade Indigo Nights and use that as my inner corner pop of color. I was gonna say highlight, but it's a pretty dark blue. So I don't know if it's really gonna be a pop highlight, if you will. Let's see though. Oh no, there's a ton of fallout. <gasps> oh no. What am I going to do? Oh no! Really though, what am I gonna do? I don't know what I'm gonna do. What am I gonna do? I need a very loose, fluffy brush. Okay, let's see if this works. I'm gonna take some of my loose powder, coat the brush so that it's not sticky anywhere or ready to pick up pigment. And please brush away, Blue. brushed away oh yay okay just a little word of advice if you go to pack on that blue in the inner corner maybe spray your brush beforehand yeah so now I'm gonna go back into that blue it is really flaky so it does make sense that it should be sprayed I just didn't think about that so now I'm gonna spray the brush perfect and let's try that again and see if we can avoid all of that fallout oh good I actually think it was worse that time see if it'll dust away again it did. But I know very soon I'm probably not gonna get that lucky, so I should perhaps be more careful. So last time, picked up a bunch of pigment. How can I do this without a bunch of fallout? Maybe upside down? Nope, still got a bunch of fallout. That's okay. Let's now see if it'll sweep away from the other side. Oh please. Yes! <gasps> we have success! Okay, inner corner highlight done, but I kinda lied. 
I'm also gonna take this little bitty sponge tip applicator, go back into the shade When Doves Cry, and put that right on top of this blue shade. I just think it's gonna be a really great topper, essentially, to turn this dark blue into a highlighty blue. Oh yes, it's like steel. Oh good, so glad that worked. Now I'm gonna go off camera, finish off my lower lashes, and throw on a lip, and I'll be right back with my final thoughts on the Urban Decay Prince collection. We are now back with the finished look. And before I give my final thoughts on this Urban Decay Prince collection, go ahead and pause this video and leave me a comment letting me know what you guys think. I'm most curious about which one of these palettes you guys would pick, like which one is your favorite. Would it be the You Got The Look eyeshadow palette or the Let's Go Crazy eyeshadow palette? You got the look, let's go crazy. Let me know down in the comments. Please satiate my curiosity. And now for my final thoughts. Let me start off with the amazing, spectacularly unique multitasking brush. For this, I would say it's really not necessary. Not unless you just really need a more dense buffing kabuki type brush with a hollow spot in the middle. I feel like you can spend much less money on brushes that are very, very similar. However, that's not to say the quality is bad or anything. The brush feels great. It did a wonderful job at putting on the luminizer and my foundation. So it definitely was a great multitasking brush. It's a little expensive for what it is in my opinion. So I cannot with good grace recommend it for that price. Maybe if it's on sale for like half off or something, then sure. Why not? If you just want a brush like that and want to add it to your collection. Otherwise, kind of the same sort of thoughts when it comes to the luminizer. It is pretty. And I, in fact, did love the way that it looked on the skin once I applied like four pumps of it. It looked really beautiful. And like I said before, it made me look like a mannequin. It was just sheeny, perfect skin. And I would say if you're going to use it like that, maybe like sort of just skin carry finishing step to just get ready for the day, or even just a liquid highlighter underneath all of your other makeup, then yes, definitely, it's beautiful. But in my opinion, if you're just gonna use it as a liquid highlighter for the high points, it's not the most amazing. It's not doing much for me. Next, the Kajal liners. I actually really like these a lot. They are actually kind of pricey for Kajal liners. However, you are paying for the royalties and the marketing of prints. So it does make sense that it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but they go on super creamy. They're really, really blendable. They smudge like nobody's business and they're pigmented and they look good. And they last about as long as the 24-7 Glide-On eye pencils on the waterline on me. So for them to only be $3 more than the 24-7 Glide-On pencils, and B Kajal liners, so they're like super sharp and they hold their sharpness. I really like these a lot. I actually think these are probably my favorite things from the collection. If we factor in everything, price, packaging, quality, so on and so forth. Then last, the two palettes. I'll say first, formula wise, they performed really well. They did everything that I needed them to do and wanted them to do. They are very reminiscent, in my opinion, of the Naked palettes. A couple of the shimmer shades when swatching really felt like I was swatching a Naked palette. So if you like the Naked formula, I feel like you will like the formula of the palettes. Just one thing that kind of has me taken aback a little bit is with this packaging, you know that if you feel the Naked palettes, they're always really weighty. They feel like they're really good quality, or at least money went into them to justify the around $50 price point. With these, I think the most expensive part of this palette is the little plastic piece on the front. I'm probably wrong about that. I'm being dramatic, but they feel just so light cardboardy, you know? They feel super affordable. Granted, the cardboard is probably a lot better cardboard than many affordable palettes that are made out of the cardboard. It just doesn't feel luxe. It doesn't feel like I paid over $50 for it. And that's kind of disappointing. But 
again, I do know that I'm paying for this logo and this name on the bottom. I know that that's what the pricing is going into, aside from the actual eyeshadows. So that just has to be something that you're aware of, that you know that you're paying for. And if you love it for the aspect of it being prints, then you're not really gonna care anyway. <laughs> and then for the color stories. To me, I'm really glad I got both of these because I feel like to make the kind of look I wanted or that I would normally want, I needed both of them so that I could get the deepness and dimension from this one and then the really bright poppin' purple tones from this one. I feel like these two combined just made the perfect palette for me. However, I don't think you need both. If you like more of a neutral color story and you want a little bit of versatility in that and you want to maybe add a little bit of mauve or gold to your neutral looks, then the You Got The Look eyeshadow palette is going to be perfect for you. If you are like me and you want purple all the way, then the Let's Go Crazy eyeshadow palette is the one for you. Just know that the deepest tone that you're going to be able to get out of this is probably this Funk and Roll purple color. That one's a shimmer. So you're not gonna be able to really get that in the crease, but that's about as deep as you're gonna be able to get. So I feel like this is definitely more of the lighter version and even the little picture on the inside of the palette definitely shows one is lighter than the other. One has more dimension, but that's just me and my opinion and my preferences. So definitely kind of a mixed bag there. It's really just a matter of preference and if that's something that you like or enjoy and what kind of color story you prefer. But all in all, as a whole, I do really like the collection. I think it is slightly relevant when it comes to prints because they added the purple palette, but man, when I thought it was just that nude palette, I was not happy about it. And I'm kind of excited to show my mom too and see what she thinks about it. See if she's like, oh, that doesn't resemble prints at all. Or maybe she'll be like, oh, that's everything I knew prints was. Anyway guys, that is it for me for this video. If you enjoyed it, it would mean the world to me. If you wanted to give me a thumbs up, just to let me know that you did, it does help me understand what type of content you guys enjoy so that I can continue to make content that you guys might enjoy. Also, if you like this look and you wanna see more looks like them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok. My username is the same for everything. It's just Christopher JMUA. And if you gain nothing out of this video, if you gain nothing out of any of my videos, please at least gain this. And that is to always remember and to never forget that you are absolutely beautiful. And I love you guys. Bye.